Hello, I am Tato Cat, and welcome to my channel. Today we are playing the letter. Previously, um, we got kicked off the uh, case, and uh, Ashton's boss is super suspicious. And uh, we kind of apologize to Becca by telling her we can't tell her anything because it's her job, and we can't tell her anything. But yeah, that's pretty much where we left off. All right, let's continue. I can never get used to how quick she just forgives me. What a shitty thing I do. Zach and Isabella, too. They've all been patient with me. Like I with them. I don't deserve any of them. Or the kind of person I've turned out to be. I'm hardly a hero, Becca. I'm just... Ash. I expect a retort. Another one laced with bitterness. <laughs> Instead, she laughs. Have hearted, with barely a hint of cheer in it. But it's a laugh, nevertheless. I honestly don't know what to make of that what to do with myself upon hearing it. It's almost like the mere sound of it is meant to pierce. The least you could have done is tell me. Maybe I could have helped, kept an ear and an eye out for you. I don't know. I could have been Irene Adler, maybe? Her smile doesn't quite reach her eyes, but the mask Try so hard for me. I give her a smile of my own, though I imagine he comes off as unenthusiastic as hers. It's far easier to slip back to banter when it's like this, just to brush off everything. At least this way, we wouldn't have to deal with awful things. The woman? Don't flatter yourself. Nancy Blue, more like. Her sidekick would beg to differ, Ashet. I couldn't stop a wry grin from forming in my lips. Psst, plural. She probably still has a photo from that contest. Keeps it in her old diary. Can I see this photo? I'm curious, what photo? I'm I want to know. Show me the photo. I never did find either of the two after I threatened to burn them. In the end, I just never brought it up again, hoping she'd just forget about the whole thing. But a small smile on her face says a lot. Those... Those were good times. A lot simpler. A lot more peaceful. Now... Now things have changed. We're no longer the same people we were as kids. That's generally how growing up works, yes? Growing up together doesn't mean it always has to be just the two of us in the first place. It's a dumb notion to believe in. When nothing ever remains constant, things will inevitably change through the years. In fact, already has long ago not just with the people we allow into our respective lives but also with us as people as friends it really does get complicated as we get older doesn't it not everything has to be though even if it's in front in the form of a promise I have no idea when I'll be able to fulfill. I swear, I'll explain when it's all over. Dot dot dot. The silence afterwards brings an even heavier air between us. Something that Rebecca, thankfully, doesn't allow to linger more than necessary. I suppose you have to go now, huh? The situation's already awkward as it is. Dragging the out will only make it more... What? 
difficult? Messed up. As if it isn't already. Back to your case again? Well, kinda, but we got kicked off of it, but we're not going to let that stop us, are we, Ash? No, we're going to go behind everyone's back and do the thing anyways. I don't really have to. I have no case as far as a job is concerned. I have the weekend off until I have to report to the chief on Monday. Although I don't want to just throw in the towel on this. Orders are orders. This isn't like the movies. I don't get to say, fuck off, throw my gun and badger him. Become a vigilante, save the day, and get my job back. I'd rather get my ass thrown in jail than do any of that. But it's also not in my nature to sit still and do nothing. It'll drive me crazy if I just idle about. Besides, there's someone who has to know about this whole Luke Wright thing. Yeah, I need to go talk to Professor Clark. And there's something else I need to look into. That other matter she mentioned last night specifically. Things even the news have been blasting out to the general public populace lately. Evening, afternoon, morning. All deaths with the same modus. Blamed on a single serial killer. Or is it still the case? Found dead in the early hours of the morning today. Oh, Poof was found dead now. The body was contained in the room and no other tenants were harmed, according to Lux Pontelis. Okay, but who? We're grasping at straws as far as these murders are concerned. In the first place, I'm not even the one heading this investigation. And look at me, treating it as if it's another high-profile case on my shoulder. How sad is that? Although, all three of my friends have mentioned seeing something strange. I don't want to go into that line of thinking. For now. Not yet. Not until I've exhausted every logical argument I could throw at it. To be honest though, I don't know how to take all of this anymore. But I've already given Isabella my word. It'd bother me more if I didn't follow up on a promise I made to her. And after Rebecca claims last night, right? There won't be enough sarcasm in the world if what my friends have been telling me is true. I can already hear Isabella's laughter, in fact. Figures. What else can it be? It's not another case. It's something else. Case related. Case adjacent. That issue Isabella mentioned yesterday morning. I'm sure you remember you were there. Well, at least you're not neglecting all your friends. Just me. Is that what she's saying? Becca, I promised her I'll... She doesn't wait for me to finish. With a roll of her eyes, she turns around and shuts the door in my face. I have no idea what I've said this time, but... I probably deserve that. You'll just have to fix this some other time. Maybe by then her temper is sure to have cooled off significantly. Probably not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, just got kicked off. Here it is. Rebecca confronted Ashton about what happened at the party the night before. Unable to tell any details, the latter simply admitted it was confidential. Although Rebecca accepted this, her displeasure remains evident on her face. Hopefully. Dot dot dot. For now, I can't laze around. Gotta attend to things that matter more. Professor Clark first, deliver the bad news. 
And that issue with BRC and Isabella. Maybe I'll also drop by Zach. Check on him. Hear what he has to say. He has also read that damn letter. I might as well, while I'm here, playing a paranormal detective. Or what it or was it supernatural? I can't remember. Whatever. It wouldn't hurt anyone if I tried to get to the bottom of this. If nothing comes out of this, good. Everyone can shut up about stupid curses and we can finally get back on track with our lives. On to more important stuff. If there is something... Are you two done? There's a moment of confusion, and I don't see her familiar ponytail about, only to find her standing behind the door to her apartment seconds later. Isabel holds it open, though only slightly, as if to hide from anyone who might happen to pass by. This early, and on a lazy weekend? I doubt anyone would, but from the gap in what little light there is behind her, it can make out the appearance of someone who has just clearly gotten out of bed. Hair, in complete disarray, eyes still heavy with sleep, and a small pout on her lips. She hasn't even gotten out of her pajamas. I look away long before my sense of decorum kicks in. We might be friends, I'll even dare say we've grown closer over the years, but that doesn't extend beyond the bounds of propriety. Christ, even Rebecca never greets early visitors in her sleep clothes. Though, maybe it's our fault why she's up this early. <coughs> but still, he makes a slow crawl up my neck. When I quickly downplay with a solid cough. It, it, Isabella, you're up early. Oh, yes. Well played. Not suspicious at all. Lame. At least he is aware. No, I'm not. I'm usually up at this hour. You're the one that usually sucks at getting up early. Says the person who looks like she's just fallen out of bed. Instead of the usual quip. She simply averts her gaze to some point beside her, and although it only flashes briefly across her face, an expression of hurt flickers in her eyes and disappears the second she turns her attention back to me. That moment has sent a worried twinge in my stomach. I've seen on her plenty of times before just... Never in a manner that unsettles. It feels, I don't know, off this time? I didn't say anything wrong, did I? Hey, are you... Uh, anyway, was that Becca with you? You both sound like Mama and Papa when they fight. You're awfully loud. If we get another memo from the landlady, I'm asking the guard to ban you from ever entering this place. Me? Becca's the one almost shouting. Yeah, well, she lives here. You don't. Also, you were kind of kicking walls the other day. I'm sure that doesn't go very well over with the landlady. You have no excuse. You're the suspicious-looking person. Thanks. Glad at least one person appreciates how I pretty up this place. Don't flatter yourself. This place would be so much better without having to see your face every few days. She follows it up with another pout. Her ruffled appearance, particularly how puffy her eyes are, I notice just how takes away from the intimidating effect she's trying to show. Really, right now, she just looks more like an angry puppy. I might have left had it not given me another nagging sense of something is definitely wrong with her. What? Has she been crying earlier? That... That is worrying. She really does that. The only time it happened, 
the one time I've ever seen her genuinely tear up over something. I think it was after Delvin Court. The night at the bridge. I want to ask. She seems determined to keep it to herself, though. Belle, did something? Well, maybe if you weren't constantly calling her crybaby or a scaredy cat or generally making fun of her for having emotions, she wouldn't be so uh, worried or guarded about showing her emotions, Ashton. About yesterday, Ash, the things we talked about, do you think... Do you think we can take a look at it today? Absolutely, we have nothing else going on. I guess, besides telling Professor Clark that, I guess, I think Luke killed his wife or something like that, and that's what happened. We? I never said you're coming with me. Don't worry, I didn't forget about it. You'll be the first to know if I find anything. Will she, though? No, I, I want to go with you. I'll be ready in a few. This won't take long. Especially since our characters wear the same clothes all the time. Isabella, you really don't have to. I can handle it on my own. You'll just... I won't get in the way, I promise. Besides, maybe... Maybe I can help. You know, if you... If there are... <laughs> files you want to check? I don't like what she's implying. It's true. LPD is having a hard time with this, but taking Isabella with me, it's out of the question. Under normal circumstances. You're the one who's going to get in trouble if you do that. You said it yourself. You need information. And I can help you get that. And, and it's not like it matters anymore. I just, I just don't want to stand around doing nothing today. Yeah, let her come. Do I get a choice? If I get a choice, Isabella is going with us. There it is again. The slight shift in her eyes, the mild crease forming between her eyebrows, and the mild slump in her shoulders while she crosses her arms tightly around herself, like she's shielding herself from whatever painful thing there is out there. I have plenty of reasons why I shouldn't let her tag along. First and foremost, she's a civilian. Second, I have no concrete plan of action yet. I'm going into this blind. That's only two reasons. Whatever. No matter how I look at it, it's simply better for her to just wait. So she won't drag me she, so she won't drag What? So she won't be dragged into what might be another one of my failures. Her assumptions might be a dead end for all we know. And seeing that expression on her, hearing her speak those words out loud, in a desperate, almost pleading tone, I can't bring myself to say no. So I give in, because right there, I see myself in her. The person who doesn't want to stay idle. He doesn't want to think of the problems haunting him. Alright, five minutes. What? You're timing me? Yeah, you're wasting time by asking him if he's timing you. Just get ready. Well, I can't wait forever. I'm a very busy guy. Four minutes and 45 seconds, Isabella. I hate you so much. Just get ready, Isabella. I'm taking back what I said last week. You haven't changed at all. 4 minutes and 30 seconds, 29, 28. Why is timing so bad? You said you'd get ready in a few minutes anyways. Just do it. Quit complaining. <sighs> I'd hurry if I were you. Ugh, you're awful! I hope you never get a girlfriend. <laughs> she slams the door right after, although I chuckles. The mirth and lightness in it linger. With her. Those have always come easy somehow. Even as it echoes as its echoes fade, and only the ghost of a smile remains. It's not like I'm looking for anyone else. 
I want to tell her. Okay. She didn't look like this. Disturbed by the ruckus outside her unit, Isabella reprimanded Ashton for the noise. The latter noted her disheveled appearance and puffy eyes. Although before he could ask about it, she brought up the issue with BRC again and insisted they both look into it that night. It's not because I can't. I won't. I'm the one who has chosen not to until I fixed myself. Till I found myself underneath all that guilt and those lies I've been telling all these years. Because no matter how heavy the weight of these feelings are, I'm not yet worthy of them. Of her. Until then, little words and gestures are the only things I can offer. Minor stuff such as digging deeper into this thing with BRC in order to ease her worries. I'm not even sure if this will give us anything. Unlike with the firm case, which I already have the proper leads on, I'm just going by her words on this. Speaking of the Luxborn firm case, I still had to inform the professor. The apprehensions there for sure. I made a lot of promises to the man, and I would have preferred to tell him in person, not over the phone. But it's better for him to hear it from me, rather from a stranger. The railings offer a steady support while I wait for him to answer. I like to think I can do this without losing my nerve. My grip on the bar surely tightens, though. Once the call connects. Ashton! Not running today, Professor? He's usually at the park on late Saturday mornings. As long as it isn't raining cats and dogs. Keeps him young and healthy, he says. And he's certainly fit for a man of his age for the sedentary job. Oh, oh no, not today. He's definitely at the usual place, though. Cheers and laughter, lively from children and families, filter through the receiver. I tend to avoid the park precisely because of this. No use reminding myself of the could-haves when it's already over. Mom's doing well with her career. Dad's also fine the last time I visited, although neither remarried. They're both content with their lives as it is. I'm probably the only one still caught up with it, hence my aversion. But all in all, it's still a pleasant sight to see. If you're the kind who takes joy in such sights, like Professor Clark does. Just thought I'd enjoy the nice weather, before it takes a turn for the norm again. And to what do I owe the pleasure? The guy certainly seems happy right now, in any case. I almost don't want to break the news to him, but it's better to get this off quick as soon as long as he doesn't shoot the messenger. He's not the type, however, long held resentment can change a person, even someone as mild mannered as a professor. I was hoping to talk to you about the, you know, the case. I suppose I'm. Just a downer today. As soon as I say those words, he pauses, and the lightness in his voice is gone in an instant. Every time we've talked about this in the past, he does that. He's probably trying to gauge the situation based on my tone of my voice. Perhaps it's a good thing I'm delivering this news through the phone. Who knows what he'll see in my face? in my mannerisms. 
The art of keen observation? I learned it from the man. He probably already has an idea what this might be about from my manner of speaking alone. You aren't in trouble, are you? Not yet. For a second, I hesitate, looking at the dirt beneath my shoes. I did manage to eventually, after a long, ragged draw of breath, I pick up where I left off, though I still, though still fumbling with my words. Well, I'm in a bit of trouble, if you can call it that. Ashton. He only assumes that tone when there's reprimand at his heels. But, but I'm not in danger or anything. You said that yes. same excuse a million times before, Detective Inspector. That exhausted rasp in your voice tells a different story. It's nothing like what you're thinking. Don't worry. I was just... Getting attacked by a ghost. <sighs> I was taken off the Luxborn firm case. That too. I expect anger, frustration, maybe even disappointment. All he gives me is a small sigh of relief. Is that so? Well, at least you aren't in danger. Liz wouldn't be too happy if she heard you right now. Liz. Aunt Liz, she insisted I call her his late wife. A sweet-tempered woman by so many standards. They were never blessed with kids and contented herself with simply managing their bakery. But she's the closest I had to a mom in the few years I had known her. A professor, too. In the absence of my own parents in my life, the two filled the ache their divorce left in me. Believe me, you'd get an earful. You don't want to show up on her doorstep looking like you haven't slept a wink either. How many years has it been since... Nine? Ten? I can still remember, if vividly, two men, primly dressed, briefcase in hand, and a stern look on each of their faces. They were already frequent visitors to the bakery for a few months. Something about the lot being a prime property in downtown Luxbourg. I think they were hoping to settle a deal with them, but neither of the couple gave in to their demands. Why should they? That quaint little shop was a dream for them. Aunt Liz sent me home early that night after a fruitless wait for the professor. The next morning news of the bakery raised to the ground had spread across the whole city. One casualty. A few weeks later, the property was sold to the right enterprise. A fucking hotel now stands in its place. Of course, an investigation was launched after the incident. The name Luke Wright was briefly at the center of it. With a lack of any evidence, the case ultimately went cold. The professor hides it well, however. I can tell that he hates that man to this day. He might even blame Luke Wright for every tragedy that happens in the city. He has never blamed me though, when I'm as equally as responsible. I knew something was off the moment those men stepped inside the shop. I could have stayed there that night, I could have prevented anything. For happening to her, called for help, or whatever, I didn't. So it continues to eat at me until today. The guilt. The Lexborn firm case would have been our chance to re reopening that old case. If we could prove that Luke Wright, we could prove Luke Wright of his crimes. Instead, we're back to square one. Yet, all he has for me are words of comfort. I think he can still be this concerned about me 
after my carelessness, after I've broken another promise a second time. People never cease to amaze me. Well, we'll see what, uh, the professor is going to do and Ashton and Isabella is going to do in the next episode. And Tatercat, have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon.